So I'm here with uh, Richard today, who is a media operations supervisor for NBC Universal. Um, can you tell me a little bit about your role and what a typical day looks like at your position? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so my role, basically, I'm overseeing the content delivery of Universal Pictures Films and NBC Universal Network television series uh, out to digital retailers worldwide, so domestically and internationally. Um, uh, and that includes all our NBC networks, such as Bravo, E, Oxygen, USA, and then any Universal Pictures, both new and old films. So the films that are currently in theaters now and also old films from even up to 100 years ago, like the old Universal Pictures Monsters movies. Wow, Um, that's awesome. typical Um, day in my position, I'd say like a lot of communication, heavy communication, uh, outlook emails, teams communication, a lot of in-person meetings, a lot of virtual meetings with our supporting teams. Uh, so it's like our QC teams, our research teams, and also the the sales teams, uh, teams that are making the deals with these international clients, um, getting them in place for us to make these deliveries to them digitally. Awesome. And so could you tell me about your uh, sort of your career journey from your academic background and your education at Rutgers and uh, how that took you to your professional career? Yeah. Um, so honestly, I was very fortunate. Uh, this is my first position after graduating Rutgers. I graduated Rutgers in 2018. Um, took me eight months to get the position. I started out as a contractor at the coordinator level. Um, I worked that for roughly 10 months. Then I got a staff position coordinator. Uh, I worked that a little over two and a half years. Then I uh, got promoted to the next level, which is a specialist position. I worked that from March 2022 up until this March. And then um, I received this position back in March 2024. That's awesome. Um, thanks. But yeah, NBC Universal is uh, the only company I've known so far, and I absolutely love it. Uh, big, big support of the company and our values. That's great. And so um, going back to your time at Rutgers, um, how do you think Rutgers prepared you for this role? Um, I, I think Rutgers prepared me very well, honestly. Um, so my academic background, I double majored in journalism and media studies and also criminal justice. Um, I feel like our communication classes honestly did a, big, a great job. Uh, just this job is extremely communication based. Um, you have to be able to communicate really honestly any time of the day, uh, respond in a timely manner um, because we're working with teams all over the country and then also worldwide. Um, so I feel like our communication classes and journalism class directors really greatly prepared me for that. I will say um, a lot of like the actual work that I learned here, um, that was all like the company training, um, the, like all the technical stuff, like that was stuff that that was trained on by the company. So speaking of technical uh, skills, what kind of technical skills are required for the job and how do you balance that? Um, like you mentioned, um, some of the soft skills needing to respond to people at all hours, be very communicative. Um, so how do you balance those technical skills and soft skills in your role? Um, so honestly, like I, I didn't really have many technical skills before the position, um, but I, I had excellent supervisors before me that had very technical skills uh, and trained me really well. Um, so we also have to have like a, a good technical skill background to have like an understanding of file formats, like file processing, how to troubleshoot processing issues. Um, and basically we need to learn those so then we can communicate with like software engineers or, um, other various media support teams that we work with when they get involved to try and resolve issues. So it's like all of my technical skills I learned through training uh, with the company. So would you say it's like, um, like how would you divide the uh, technical skill to Mm soft skill um, balance? Um, is it like, like -hmm. Mm 60, 40 in terms of like soft skills or something like that? Or. -hmm. Yeah. I mean, personally for me, I feel like it's 60, 40, like, 40% technical for me and like 60% um, like soft skills, communication skills. So it's a good balance. That's awesome. And was there a single like factor or like a particular experience that was like an aha moment for you where you were like, I really want to go into this particular industry or is it something that just happened? Yeah. Um, so I've always loved, love films. 
Um, really, some of my biggest interests still to this day are like sports and movies. Um, in college, I was in WRSU. Uh, I really wanted to be a sports broadcaster when I was younger. Um, but then I also like, I've always loved movies, working with movies. And then like now, I, I think it's just fascinating, interesting, like knowing the part my team plays and how these films and television shows get to all these streaming platforms worldwide. Um, streaming platforms like renting when when folks are renting on demand and it's just interesting seeing the process of how they get from point a to point b really like the films like coming from like how they're literally filmed and shot and then then appearing on your screen on netflix or peacock or any of the other apps like amazon prime like it, it's really really interesting to see the process that entails like i feel like when i was younger i would just be like oh, i'm gonna watch netflix or i'm gonna watch mm -hmm. hbo or prime and then just like not really think about how these actually got there Yeah, definitely. Um, and then uh, going back to, you know, you wanted to be a sports broadcaster, you're part of WRSU, uh, mm -hmm. I'm part of WRSU myself. Um, so is there, um, you know, how do you think that also uh, helped you prepare or maybe um, any extracurriculars that you were involved with at Rutgers for your current role? Yeah, uh, I feel like WRSU did a great, great job preparing me for this. Um, another extracurricular activity I did at Rutgers was I was involved in like the New Jersey Film Festival. Um, I took some film classes too back in Rutgers. Um, and uh, I still keep in contact with that professor to this day. He, he's an incredible individual. Um, and I feel like that experience too really also helped gauge my interest in this industry. Um, Uh, I believe they still have like the New Jersey Film Festival held in like Voorhees Hall over. Yeah, I, I always, whenever I'm uh, around that area, I always see posters for it. Um, so that's pretty cool. I've never checked it out, though, but it, it seems like a, a great time. And then, um, yeah, I just feel like WRSU too did like a great job because I feel like it's like kind of like a like a little career, like at Rockers, like a student career. And it, it's pretty cool. Like, I mean, like you said yesterday, you were covering the basketball team, like, to the top recruits in the entire country and i'm gonna go to every home game this year so <laughs> i'm really looking forward to that but i mean just that experience and exposure to like i mean i remember Rutgers too like um the team is calling it on the radio like worldwide like literally like you're sitting like right by them like it, it's pretty incredible so i feel like that experience really does help and set aside from let's say another student that's graduating college that doesn't have that hands-on experience that didn't have these extracurricular activities. Definitely. And so my last question is, what advice would you give to aspiring professionals in your field? I mean, honestly, like I would say, keep doing what you're doing. Like, I mean, being involved in that and then companies will see that. Like, I feel like doing that additional exposure, like where is it, you're not just going to college for four years, just doing your classes and getting out where if you're doing all these additional extracurricular activities you're covering sporting events, you're covering events going on, on the campus and employers, employers would see that. And they're seeing that you're already having an exposure, that professional exposure, even though you're just a college student. Like, I feel like that, that is the best advice I think I could give also to like make as many connections as you can. I feel like, especially like professional connections, I feel like they really go a long way. So how do you go about uh, making professional connections and networking and that kind of stuff? I mean, in college, like, I feel like it was, like, through, like, mentors, professors. Like, I mean, I know you mentioned Pav, for example. I feel like he's a great resource to have. Like, one of my closest friends did a lot of work with Pav in the past. And some of my other friends did work with Pav in the past. And I feel like, um, like, my film professor, too. Like, he was another great contact to keep. Like, I know there are individuals that work with him. And, then like, I think he contacted, like, other um interested teams and parties and I feel like just connecting that way in college and then when starting your career I would say just to like try to meet as many many like different teams as you can because like I feel like in any industry you're going to be working with a lot of different teams some more technical some less technical but I feel like making connections in each of those departments that you're working with is just it just goes a long way.